you've become a little bit of a rarity. Someone who's constructive on this equity market, a bit more bullish. So let's talk about it. What is the bullish sell, the big argument going into year end? Well, I mean, I, I, recently there's a lot of very, very positive news that's not getting enough press. But the most important one is that inflation expectations are absolutely collapsing on where inflation is going to be a year or 18 months from now. And um, if you look at the one-year break-even, um, it's actually predicting that in a year from now, we will be below 2% on, on headline CPI. Now, a lot of that is on energy prices, but nonetheless, um, that would be a, mm. a really big deal. And that's ultimately the reason why the market is saying that the Fed is going to blink, because if when we get to the first quarter and inflation is, you know, something in the ballpark of 4 percent and the prediction is that there's momentum behind this and it's going to keep falling, why would the Fed unnecessarily drive us into recession, kill, you know, several million American jobs if, in fact, inflation is heading in the right direction? There's a bunch of other positives, but that's the most important story. Right. John, you've got the advantage of Credit Suisse Securities Research. What do they say about this present quarter in Q4 as well? Gosh, Tom, you know, this is one of those situations where I find myself in, in, on the other side of the conversation with a lot of our analysts. The, the estimates are coming down across most of of the coverage universe, um, you know, across sectors. And the reason is, is that companies delivered in, you know, really, really strong second quarter results, but then gave, you know, very, very poor guidance on what the future was going to look like, both for the third quarter and then for all of next year. So the analysts listening to company management, not, you know, not looking at the macro data, and they have no choice but to, you know, lower their estimates in line with that, you know, that, you know, th their inputs. And then I'm looking at this environment and saying, you know, it, it doesn't look robust, but, you know, following such a strong second quarter, I just don't get why estimates are falling this much. I look, John, at, at the estimate dynamics, all that's out there. We're going into a weekend, and as you know, John, all the Gloom crew publishes Friday afternoon. That just seems to be the racket. What do they get most wrong? The, um, I think that the big issue is is one of timing. Uh, there's always a recession in our in our future, and the, 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 there's two big signals that are are quite negative. The first one is that the weekly jobless claims, this is you know people becoming unemployed for the first time, um, those readings are are going up, and that's a, a a legitimate concern. However, with so many open job positions, these people are getting redeployed into other jobs, and the unemployment rate is not going up. So that is something that I think that they're they're only looking at um, half of the story. The other thing is is that. You know, the yield curve is inverted, but more importantly, the, the, the three-month to 10-year part of the yield curve is going to invert when the Fed makes their next move. And that's a really, you know, that's obviously a big issue. But if you look historically, it takes 11 months from that point of time, on average, to get to a recession. So, yes, we may have a recession, but it may be, you know, a year from now, 18 months from now. And being early on calling a recession is being wrong. I love how stock analysts are increasingly becoming bond strategists and vice versa, and that seems to be the theme that continues throughout the year. John, I want to really uh, tie this together with the question about the pivot and this idea of lower rates and this uh, conviction that the Fed cannot do the damage that a lot of people fear. Today we heard from Jim Bullard coming out yet again saying, we don't know what the market is looking at, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but that's not what we're seeing, and we plan on doing something does not look anything like a pivot. How do you get conviction to simply discount that? Well, so, Lisa, think about this in terms of, of, of game theory. Um, the, you know, the Fed needs to get inflation down in order to stop. If they tell you that they're going to stop right now, you know, three, four, six months from now, then the, the inflation expectations are going to rise because the Fed is done. So if they even want the opportunity to pivot, they have to talk really hawkishly. And and so you have this very strange dynamic where in the, in the CPI next, you know, next Tuesday is expected to come in at roughly 8 percent. 
um, a little bit lower than where it was. But a year from now, it's expected to be back in the normal range. The Fed needs to manage what's going to happen 12 or 18 months from now. But if they talk too dovishly too early, they're going to they're not going to achieve their goal. So I think that's what you know, if there's a bullish argument, it's that in many ways, of course, the Fed's going to talk hawkishly. They have no choice, so ignore it. And, 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 and so what is the Fed going to do? They're going to just keep pounding and pounding on this hawkish theme and, and, and try to ultimately uh, win that conversation. John, I got your note a couple of days ago, and it was a title that I haven't actually read much of before. Earnings estimates collapsing. Hey, John, when was the last time we talked about that? Because that's what the equity bears have been suggesting we still haven't had. And that's going to lead to the next leg lower in the equity market. Can you just build on the detail beneath that headline, earnings estimates collapsing, John? Yeah, so, um, so far uh, in this quarter, since um, the end of June, um, and this is what we're talking about, how what, what our analysts are saying is, is a bit different than what I'm, I'm seeing right now. Um, the estimates across Wall Street are down about five and a half percent for the third quarter and, and over three percent for next year. Now, putting this in perspective, this, this is a really big, um, you know, downdraft on earnings. Now, they're not expected to go negative, um, but, they, but this is a, a, you know, move really substantially in the wrong direction. What's most concerning, John, is, is where it's coming from and, and big tech is by far the worst of this um, of this whole picture. And, and it's not like it's one group. Internet retail is having a hard time. The big communications companies, like the Facebooks and the Googles, on weaker advertising and software and semis and hardware. So it's, it's extremely broad-based. And um, what my guess is, is that if the economic data continues to be where it is right now, I and mean, if you look at like the uh, City Economic Surprise Index, it's jumping. The data is coming in better. That I think you're going to get pretty good beats, but the but corporate management and the analyst community, um, like I was mentioning before, is much more skeptical. So, John, where do you think that skepticism is justified when it comes to earnings? Though, would you acknowledge that some of that around the earnings expectations is justified? Is there a part of the equity market you'd still well clear of? Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I think that there's actually a really big problem in, in the technology space. Um, and in many ways, what we're experiencing now feels a lot like Y2K. When we all, you know, started working from home, we got new iPads and laptops, and we signed up for Netflix, and our employers had to get new software and infrastructure to allow us to work from home. And there was a massive increase in tech spending, but that pulled activity from the future, and now we're seeing really pretty poor results. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the FANG definition, but FANG stocks had a negative earnings growth of negative 24 percent in the second quarter, where the overall market was plus 10. Um, this, I think, is the biggest difference between tech to the downside versus the market since the iPhone came out, you know, well over a decade ago. So uh, that area is actually expected to be weaker. Where I think that you may see more upside is the consumer, I think, is in better health. Um, and, you know, even in, in other areas like um, like industrials and, and materials, I think that things are OK. Um, I think you're going to see solid results from defensive shares, but they're really, really expensive. So, you know, but they'll, but they'll hold up OK.